I'm uh, Richard Flynn with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. I know a lot of you guys, and you guys are all you guys are familiar with um, NRCS, I'm sure. <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about is these programs uh, that provide uh, technical and financial assistance for the, to get some of this work done that you guys are doing. So, am I good to just get going here? Okay. So just really briefly, those of you that don't know the NRCS, we've been around for 80 some years or something like that since about 1935. Uh, we started because of the Dust Bowl, which I'm sure you guys all know. Um, at, uh, back in the Midwest, they were kind of over farming, if you will, not doing real good farming practices. And then you combine that with the drought and we ended up with the Dust Bowl. And uh, so uh, Hugh Hammond Bennett went to Congress and he uh, ended up essentially starting the NRCS program, NRCS, which was Soil Conservation Service. And before that, I think it was the Soil Erosion Service for a very short time. Okay, it's not working now. I can just hit the forward. Okay, so our mission uh, is uh, we deliver conservation solutions so agriculture producers can basically do what you're doing. We want to be able to allow you to help you guys do what you're doing, but uh, do it in a sustainable way. So we don't want to like stop what you're doing. We just want to help you uh, do it economically if you, and also uh, uh, sustainably, which is a good for everybody, right? And what we do is uh, a planner will come out and there's some NRCS planners in here. Um, they'll come out to your place and they'll adjust, uh, assess your resource concerns. We kind of operate on resource concerns. We go out there and see what issues you may be having. You may not even be aware you're having or you think, ah, it's a small problem. I don't think I need to do much about that. So we'll look to see if there's a water quality problem, uh, water quantity, erosion, soil health, just any kind of these issues, uh, weeds, uh, uh, cattle, like in areas where it's kind of ruining a good water source, that kind of thing. Uh, and we try to come up with ways we, we help you do a conservation practice to deal with these. So some examples of these practices are no-till. Uh, we can help you with an irrigation system. We can help you with more efficient pumps. If you got old pumps, uh, we can help you financially and uh, technically get some better pumps going and vegetative practices, plant like windbreaks and that sort of thing. And also uh, like have a place to put your manure so it's not like when it rains, going down into the stream and that kind of thing. So just real briefly, I'm the state range management specialist. So that's kind of what I know. And actually I'm not even a program specialist. So if I get any hard questions, I got some people in here I'll, I'll be asking. But uh, so one of our main one is prescribed grazing and that's, uh, um, helping you uh, basically still graze your land, but do it so it's it's um, not not making your productivity go down and cause another causing some of those resource concerns. Uh, so now you know with the government, we got to change things all the time. It had a perfectly good name called prescribed grazing, but now we call it managed grazing because that's way different, right? Uh, it uh, anyway. So again, the purposes are. Uh, improve or maintain species composition, improve forage, uh, reduce erosion, uh, improve water quality, and also help your biomass, like get rid of some of that cheatgrass, if you got it, that kind of thing. And what goes along with that, a lot of times it's the reason they uh, prescribe grazing can't be done is because you don't really have the infrastructure. So one of our standards is, uh, practice standards is fences. And so we'll cost share on fences to help that grazing system go better. Uh, and you can see that we have standards. So the fences go in and uh, go in right. And so they last. Another one is it's, an, it's a new one. And it's, it's actually, a, a, what do you call it? It's a, not an intermediate, but it's a interim. The interim practice is annual forage for grazing systems or annual, like a cover crop type thing could be planted. And then uh, you can use that, a rancher could use that for a time of year when he doesn't have much feed, all his perennial grasses have kind of been used up, dried up or whatever. And he could really use some like the late fall or something like that, or any time. And he, if he planted annual forages, then he can utilize that. And NRCS will cost share on that. 
Uh, and what Don said, you know, keeping in mind, you have a, a good cover crop mix and actually uh, uh, both speakers, um, you know, watch out for weed problems, make sure you got a cover crop mix that's, that's, that's gonna help the cattle and they can get enough feed on there without, um, and still get their nutrition. So that's 810. So again, just provides temporary cover to reduce erosion, provide forage where perennial soil, and, and it can be where you're gonna put in a pasture. You're converting from crop ground, pasture ground. You can do this for a year um, and provide some feed in the meantime. It'll help get that site prepped to put in your perennial grasses or whatever. Uh, pasture and hay planting, that's another practice. I just I'm just touching on a few of these practices. I, I'll show you, we got a ton of them, but just touching on some of the ones that, um, for uh, ranchers particularly. Uh, so pasture and hay plants, just what it sounds like, will help you uh, finance um, uh, pasture planting or hay. And of course, it's to uh, uh, help your livestock nutrition and forage and, um, and provide forage per periods when you don't have much. And it can just be like you've been on a pasture for a long time, even if you're managing, managing pretty well. It uh, just over time, you know, it, it needs to be replanted. And sometimes it's good to replant it if it's an old enough pasture, even if you're doing things pretty well. Just because all of that selective grazing that was talked about earlier, sometimes it's just hard to uh, maintain a pasture in good condition forever. And to go with prescribed grazing, you might, a rancher may have a spot where they're doing their best to distribute their cattle, but because they don't have water in a, so in a source, in, in a part of their pasture, or they got a water source and it's just being beat up really bad, we can help out with the spring development. <clears throat> and then of course, what goes with the spring development, that's the, the spring box and all that, getting the water out of the spring and getting up out of the kind of the riparian area and, uh, and then getting it in a trough and then getting overflow of that water out of the trough down back into a place where it's not being uh, mucked up and everything. And so you end up with a better spring development and you end up with good quality water for your livestock. Okay, now the programs. Those are just the, the, just to touch on some practices. Again, there's a ton, um, uh, but the thing that's really helped is the financial, uh, the programs that add technical and financial assistance. We've got EQIP, which is Environmental Quality Incentive Program. Uh, that's kind of the one that's uh, uh, for just uh, doing all these. It's when you just got a problem, come out and try to address one of these problems, one of these resource concerns. Uh, EQIP CIC is a uh, EQIP conservation incentive contracts. We'll talk about that in just a second, well, how that's different. There's a conservation stewardship program. That's for your ranchers have been doing good stewardship for years. And we kind of want to reward you for that and to keep you doing it. And so you just got to do a little bit more. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute too, um, to uh, stay, get into that program. And then there's a couple of easement programs, one for agricultural lands, keep working those agricultural lands um, as you would to keep it in agriculture. And then there's a wetland reserve uh, program too. And then there's our CPP. So let's just talk about some of these real quick. quick. So uh, yeah, EQIP, it focuses on solving your resource concerns and it's, you can use it on any ground, crop ground, rangeland, forest, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, pasture and associated grounds. So um, where enter, a planner will come out uh, and look at your place, work with the, the rancher, and, uh, and, and kind of look at their ground and see what resource concerns they have. And together, they um, will work together and develop a plan on what that rancher wants to do. It's not NRCS telling them what to do, or as you, you guys may know or may not know, NRCS is not a regulatory agency. We just volunteer. So you don't want to do it, you can say go away and we go away. Anyway, that, so that's the equip basically just kind of help address your, your lodge off problems. And then we've got an area that's a focus focus area that's a little bit more money give, uh, donated to that or put into that program uh, to address extra resource concerns or kind of extra focused high priority resource concerns like wind erosion, groundwater and forest. So um, it, uh, all right, where's my thing? So like the uh, wind erosion area, I don't know if you can see it on the map there, the red areas. And if you're in this area, there's a little more, you get more ranking points. Actually, well, you gotta be in this area. And then you're eligible for this program here, 
which helps you do things to deal with erosion. Um, um, so if you're in that area, that's that's a focus of that. Um, there's a groundwater focus area, and that's the red spots on this map. Uh, and you can see they cover some ground. Of course, they're not up here so much in Lincoln too much, but um, that's the groundwater area uh, focused uh, program. And now we get to the conservation stewardship program. And that's for uh, you folks that are, again, doing good stewardship. And uh, so we kind of want to reward you with that. You get to you end up getting annual payments every year up to a significant amount. It, uh, and to get in the program, all you got to do is uh, one enhancement um, to kind of up the game just a little bit more. We're kind of just having you push that envelope a little bit more. So an example would be like if you had fences, you already had, so you already had prescribed grazing going on, you're doing all this, you're doing pretty good stuff. Um, but your fences are not very wildlife friendly. So what you in this program, uh, if, you, if you said you'd do some enhancements, like fit, do some wildlife friendly fencing, like on the far left, that'd be a lay down fence. Like if there's places where elk come through or something like that seasonally, and your cows on in there, you're gonna you put a piece of lay down fence in there, or you got markers for sage grouse, or you got these other um, fences that uh, elk and deer will go over. If there's a bar, they'll be more readily go over that stuff. So that, that would get you into that program. Um, it, uh, again, these the other enhancements besides that fencing and improve wildlife habitat, pasture and hay plantings. There's a bunch of different things you can do just to kind of up your game. Like if you do have a pasture, if you kind of add more species into that, that that's an enhancement that'll get you into it. Uh, even like stuff like grazing to reduce wildfire risk, which you, you probably want to do anyway. Okay, so the, these are two easement programs. Uh, the first one is the wetland reserve program. That's where the NRCS are actually, if there's a wetland area, and maybe you not even get that much use out of it because it's wetland area, but to kind of keep that from being developed or anything. Uh, and there's, maybe, I don't know if we got an easement specialist in there or not, but um, NRCS will buy that. It's still the, it's still the landowner could still what, do what they kind of were doing in there before. Um, I mean, there are, there are more limitations on that. The second program, the agricultural lands easement, um, that's really where the, the farmer can kind of keep doing the agricultural stuff, grazing or whatever he was doing before he or she was doing before. Um, but it keeps it from being, by NRCS, by it keeps it from being a developer coming in and putting a bunch of houses or shopping mall or anything like that. It kind of protects that, and keeps that in ag forever. Uh, I guess right now we got 4.4 million acres in that, in easements nationwide. Uh, this is the Regional Conservation Partnership Program. This is where uh, if, if there's a partner, like you got a watershed or maybe a county or something like that, and there's kind of a, a, a recognized resource concern that they really want to get a handle on. When a partner comes forward, it could be a conservation district, it could be um, it could be a nature conservancy. It could be, just, or there's numerous pro partners come forward and say, hey, we'll put some money into this. And then NRCS will be like, well, if you're gonna be willing to put in like 50%, we'll put in 50% and that we can do a lot more when we're working together like that. That's the RCPP program. Uh, so I always end up talking ahead of the slide and then, then the next slide says everything I just said. Um, yeah, one thing to keep in mind, these things are ranked nationally, so they're pretty competitive. So, uh, it, uh, the, yeah, it's not just rank, ranked in Washington. And the important thing to remember is how big an impact and how much partner contribution, innovation is in what is being solved. That's what really ranks these things high. But they, it's pretty competitive, but in Washington, we've got quite a few of them going on. So it's not like, we don't get ranked out pretty high here. Um, and so some are obviously pretty big and some are smaller, like the little yellow dot is the Odessa groundwater replacement, um, RCPP uh, that got awarded. So there's quite a few, a lot of fairly, a lot of amount of real estate being uh, addressed. These programs, they, uh, you can see, again, there's, it's not chump change. There's a lot of money going towards these. There's the Farm Bill Equip, 19.8 million. This is Washington only, by the way, now, uh, numbers. 
uh, 9.8 million. Uh, the IRA, that's Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, EQIP, 4.2 million is put into that. Uh, and then you see the next one down, Farm Bureau CSP, 13 million, 27. And Inflation Reduction Act, CSP, 5 million. And then the Farm, Farm Bill uh, easement program, 1.7. One thing about the Inflation Reduction Act, as you guys may or may not know, that money is not going to be here very long. It's just another two or three years or something like that. Again, our planners probably know better than I do. But um, so if you want to take advantage of that stuff, act now because it's only for a short period of time. But it's to address things. Uh, let me see if it's on the next one. It, uh, is, there's a bunch of practices that have been identified that like help sequester carbon and that kind of thing. And they end up being a lot of the conservation practices that we do anyway, like take prescribed grazing. Um, you know, you graze right, you're going to sequester carbon. You don't graze right, you're going to pound things in the ground and you're going to, your plants are going to um, diminish and get less vigorous and all that kind of thing. And you're going to um, not put as much carbon in the ground. So what I'm trying to say there is, a lot of our pra regular practices that you would do would come under the in Inflation Reduction Act uh, practices. Um, and here's, here's the Conservation Reserve Program I was talked about. It uh, you get paid for um, for good, doing good land stewardship, and you get payments for uh, ten years. Um, the Safe Program down here at the bottom, uh, State Acres for Wildlife. Those are because you're doing a little bit more, you're planting a little bit more plants, you get a little bit more money uh, in that program because you're, you're doing a little bit more for wildlife. Uh, the CLEAR program, 30, that's a new program. It's been around only a year or two or three. And uh, it's for, uh, of course, if it's, it's for areas just are along crep streams. So if you don't have a crep stream, that's more probably not so much in this country. It's down by, uh, down in Whitman County more and that kind of thing. Crep streams are uh, where you're doing uh, riparian um, reforestation and stuff along uh, streams, uh, they're valuable to trout and that kind of fish. I better hurry here, I think. And this is a, now this is an FSA program too. The last thing CRP was an FSA program. This FSA program, this is a conservation reserve program for grasslands. That's if you're grazing cattle uh, and they, they'll pay you uh, to continue doing that, just keep working the lands like you're doing. Of course, you, you still have to have a plan with NRCS. So, it, you know, we can't be supporting anything where the land is being abused. So we, you'd work on a plan. So everything's being uh, managed pretty well. Um, and you can get into this program, but this prioritizes, uh, this has priority areas too. And it's, it tries to focus on, it does focus on areas that are more likely to be, uh, they're a threat, and, a threat of conversion. To again, development to, to, to whatever. Um, and the whole point of the conservation reserve program grasslands is to keep ag in ag. So uh, if you're in an area that has a high threat of conversion, uh, you'll get more points. You see the points down here. And so a lot of Washington is at least uh, blue and some is dark blue. And then of course on the west side, you can see where it's dark green, which is even higher threat <clears throat> as you would suspect. Okay, so I think I'm, I did this about right. Uh, this is our, th these are nearby service centers here, Davenport, Ridgeville, um, and uh, I'm from the state office. And uh, yeah, so I think if you have any questions, I could answer any questions. So the question was, is virtual fencing a practice that NRCS supports? Uh, yes, it is. We, we support it through the, kind of in an indirect way, we support it through the prescribed grazing practice. So if somebody's willing to do a prescribed grazing plan and, it's, and it works out economically and stuff because virtual fencing is not cheap. So if there's enough you know, land there that it works out that uh, they can use virtual fencing to implement that prescribed grazing plan. Uh, we're just getting some, yeah, we've just getting some, yes, it's still, um, it's actually still being studied a lot because uh, you may or may not know that there's still some issues with it, but um, like, uh, and you wouldn't use it everywhere necessarily, like the wheel fence uh, along a highway, you know, because, yeah, so, uh, but there are areas where it, it does, works pretty well, and, uh, um, and, but like anything, there's, you know, 
um, sometimes cows get out and stuff. But I will say this, I won't get off on a tangent here, but um, because you got your cows are all got GPS units on, you can always see where they are. You get on your computer and you can find out, oh, three or four went down a creek they weren't supposed to go down. And you get on your horse and go down there and round them up. Any other questions? And I, yeah, again, encourage you, there's NRCS folks in here in these offices to stop by. They, they could answer any question you got. Thanks.